How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Yes, I'm back in studio. And yes, Mike, in fact, will be back joining us here today. And we got a lot to talk about. It is Friday here on this show. Mike has recovered from his illness. Well, I don't know if he's recovered, but he's recovered enough to do the show today. And so it's time to talk about stuff we didn't talk about the last couple of days. We haven't even reviewed Dynamite. We'll talk about Dynamite here on the show today. We've got a lineup for tonight's SmackDown. They have just added a championship celebration with Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan and the return of Shinsuke Nakamura as well. So we'll go over all of that. And then, yes, the news. Dynamite ratings from Wednesday night. Update on Mickey James. We had until yesterday to get cleared, which is noted on, I think it was, um, I think it would have been Tuesday's show when Lance co hosted. This was a legitimate deal where they were doing a storyline where if she got cleared by Thursday, she would be able to compete this weekend at the Rebellion pay per view. And if she could not get cleared, she was going to have to vacate the title. And it was legitimate. They did not know if she was going to get cleared or not. And uh, what happened is she did not get cleared. So we'll give you an update on her status. We've got changes to the King of the Ring pay-per-view. Matt Hardy talks about Jeff Hardy, who, of course, returned on Wednesday. And in the final segment of the show, Aaron Stevens of the NWA is going to join us today. Talk a number of different topics. So that's going to be a lot of fun. It's a Friday show, everybody. You know what that means. And uh, if you'd like to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. A lot to get into after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Yes, Mike's back. What's going on, dude? Summer colds and sickness are the absolute worst, the dirt worst. So I had bronchial issues and sinitis, which, you know, wouldn't be so bad except for the doctor wanted me to take mucinex, guafacin, or whatever it's called, to flush everything out of my lungs. The problem with that is then it all went into my sinuses, which were hurting a little bit. Felt like two knives shoved between my eyes. What a quack. Yeah, and and, and dizziness, but some of this stuff is now expelling out of my lungs, and I woke up about 1 o'clock today and didn't feel worse, so I decided I'll do the show with with you today because I know you've been lonely. I didn't even do the show yesterday. I know. I heard. I'll tell you what I'm I'm not. I'll tell you what I'm not. Lonely. Are you not lonely? There's There's nothing better than being alone as opposed to being here surrounded by i listen i'm this close on the chat the day has not even started i'm this close on the chat okay so i want to thank all of our moderators i'm hoping that they have the 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 you know finger on the on the trigger get rid of them i don't want to hear it you know i'd say what's going on but you know what you know more than i do there's nothing worse in wrestling than this whole cm punk thing there's just absolutely nothing worse it's like it is to the point now where nobody wants to actually look at anything except what side are you on. And then I have to hear about what side I'm on, even though what I'm trying to do here is just tell you what's going on. And some of that's led to me being on a side or whatever. And then I got people trying to pick fights with me. Like, I never did anything. I don't want to hear about it. If I have to hear one more thing out of Dax, and I will call him out right here, Dax. If I have to hear one more thing on his podcast about me, because you know what? You can go back. I'll pull $1,000 out of the bank right now. You can go back and you can listen to every show that I've ever done, okay? I want you to find one time that I have been overly critical of FTR as a tag team. I have done nothing, nothing but put over FTR matches. I have done nothing but talk about what a great tag team FTR is. Over and over and over again. In the Observer Awards. Hey, who do you think's tag team of the year? It's FTR. I said it should be FTR before the awards. I said it should be FTR after the awards. Now, at some point, how this became, 
I have an issue with FTR. How I prefer the Young Bucks over FTR. I don't even know where that came from. I've never been anything but complimentary about FTR. And then I heard another one the other day. Something about how I said that Dax was a horrible person. I got $1,000. If you can find one time ever on this show that I ever said that Dax Harwood was a horrible person, $1,000. You're never going to find it. I have never once said anything about Dax being a horrible person. What I did was I reported that there was heat on Dax. I reported that there was heat on CM Punk. What do you want me to do? That's what happened. And then apparently he got really mad because, oh, I don't even know what, what story it was, like CM Punk's Instagram post or something like that. And I said, you know, a lot of people are really upset about this. And so then it was like, he said, I know for a fact who told Brian that. I know, and I don't know if he said my name, but he goes, I know who a f who, for a fact where that came from. Because uh, he said apparently like some guy went into the locker room and was telling everybody else, you know, I can't believe he posted that or whatever. Bro, you want to know why I said there was heat on CM Punk? And you want to know why I said there was heat on, I don't even know what the last one was about FTR, posting or saying something on the podcast. It's not because one guy told me anything, okay? It's because all I heard for 20, you know, that CM Punk Instagram post, my day was just like for hours, text, text, DM, call, text, not the same guy, one person after another. So I said, you know what? A lot of people are not happy about that. Where suddenly that became, oh, it's one guy. It wasn't one guy. This is, this is right back to what started this whole all-out thing. Oh, you know, the Young Bucks must have told Dave and Brian something. Yeah, well, you know what? They didn't. And we're back to the exact same thing. Why does everybody think they know who tells me what? Why? Because you heard one guy in a locker room say one thing? So what? Why does that mean that... For sure, I guarantee, I promise, I I don't even know the word he used. Like, leave me alone. I'm telling you people what's going on. I have no issue. But the thing is here, this is my this is my theory, okay? My theory is that for some reason, they are trying to get people to believe that I have an issue with them. So that maybe when something happens, I'll hey, when no, you I don't, say they. Also, I don't want to. When you say I don't want to talk about it. Dax and Dax and FTR. Well, it's mostly Dax. Dax. I never hear anything from Cash. It's Dax over and over again. I think he's trying to create in the minds of fans this idea that I don't like them, and I don't know why, because I've never been anything but complimentary. But the funny thing is, the more he goes on with this, he doesn't like me, and he's got a problem with me, and this is like. I'm having a problem with this now, which I never had before. What do I have to do with anything? What do I have to do with any of this? You know, I'm also upset that I have to hear, oh, you know, it's Brian and Dave's fault that this happened or this had. No, you know what? It's not my fault. Anything that's happened that's caused an issue isn't my fault. If you did an Instagram post and then I reported on it, and then there was heat, or you got mad, or somebody... That's not my fault! I didn't write the Instagram post. I didn't punch anybody in the locker room. I didn't get in a fight. I didn't do any of that. If you're upset that something happened that I reported or Dave reported, you know what the problem is? The problem is the fact that it happened. That's the problem. So I'm about done with it. And I'm about done with hearing that it's my fault. I don't like this guy. I'm picking sides. Dude, I'm just telling people what happened. That's it. I'm not picking sides. I'm not trying to start a fight. For weeks now, I've been having to hear this, and I've been trying to just stay out of it. I'm just not talking about it. And after a while, it was like, you know what? I'm not talking about a lot. 
that I that I should be talking about. And I'm going to tell everybody what's going on that I know. And I don't want to hear about, oh, Brian this, Brian that, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Irritated. Then I have I to hear it what? from fans. Oh, Brian this, Brian that. You're going to stay irritated because, unfortunately, it's not going away. Or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at things. Because it looks like CM Punk is going to be back. And Tony Khan does want to figure out a way to get him back. And apparently, if rumors are true, there's a working plan to move heaven and earth and actually have split rosters to try to facilitate him coming back. Yeah, you know, it sounds so... like things are going along real great. <laughs> if, you, if you have a situation where there's two sides that have such an issue with each other that you have to put them on different shows? Do you not see that there's a problem here that doesn't involve me, by the way? Doesn't involve me. That's an issue. There's a big issue here. I think there's a uh, there's a silent amount of people. There's a, I don't want to say they're a majority, but I bet you there's a lot of people, because there's a lot of just fans who go, I want to see Punk back because I don't care about all this other stuff that you're talking about. I want to see as many stars as on my TV as possible. There's also a, a silent group that is probably hoping that you take the Bucks and CM Punk and Larry and anybody else who's been involved in any of this stuff and the earth can open up and just devour all of them and they can all go away and then we can be a lot happier. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. That whole first segment, and now I have to actually talk about this story. God. From the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, which is from The Observer this week. Now you're going to be sick for the next week. By the way, I don't write The Observer. If CM Punk is to return to AEW, the working idea has been to use split crews that would tie into a rumored new Saturday night show with the former AEW world champion as a featured star. Dave Meltzer said no deal has been finalized for the show nor the potential Turner Network the show would be on. The original idea was a two-hour show, quote, with equal the star power of Dynamite. As of now, there is a lone Saturday, July 8th date, for a televised event in Regina, Canada, with a start time of 7 Eastern. Meltzer noted there would be cases like pay-per-views or special one-off events like AEW All-In at London's Wembley, in which the split crew would not work for obvious reasons, unless you have a separate building. News is intensified this week of a potential punk return around the time A.W. returns to Chicago in late June for the Forbidden Door Go Home edition of Dynamite. Meltzer noted punk's return is considered, quote, a tenuous situation because the dressing room issues involving him have not been settled at all at press time. Of course, we had the story of the all-out brawl, including punk, A. Steel, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks in September. Punk has not appeared on AW programming since that event. He has been rehabbing a torn tricep suffered that night against John Moxley. According to a Friday Fightful report, Punk would like to work with the elite and has pushed for a meeting with them for some time. A meeting with Punk and Chris Jericho is also supposed to... You know, I'm like, dude, I've been trying so hard. But listen. There was a all-out press deal. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, right? Okay. CM Punk went in, mm -hmm. and he just cut a promo on everybody. He was angry and he was furious. Eight muffins. He goes back to his locker room. The Young Bucks and Kenny Omega get the head of legal to go talk to CM Punk. And CM Punk punches Matt Jackson, and a brawl breaks out, okay? Am I wrong about any of this? I no one, there, nobody know. has disputed that course of events. Nobody. Okay? Now, if you want to talk about whatever happened and Larry and whatever, I don't know. But nobody has disputed that what happened was Punk went to his locker room, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Miga went to the locker room, the head of, of legal, and then CM Punk punched Matt Jackson and a fight broke out. Okay? CM Punk punched Matt Jackson. That's how this whole thing started. All right? Now, don't did do this whole thing. Yeah, well, you know, before that, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I got kids, okay? If one of my kids punches another one of my kids, 
And then the kid that punched the first kid goes, yeah, well, so-and-so, you know, took my dinosaur. You don't punch him. Right? Stop Am I wrong here? This. Okay, so if CM Punk wants to work with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, fine, okay? But am I wrong about this? You probably shouldn't have punched him. Am I wrong? Correct me when I'm wrong, okay? Well, well if, if, if you, you want to if you want to work with them, you probably shouldn't have punched him. Well, if you felt threatened, then yes, but that is yes. Do you punch somebody in a professional environment with the head of legal right there without any reason? No, you shouldn't do that. Okay. So if you want to work with them, you know, the the problem probably them not wanting to work with you probably started when you punched them. Yeah, okay? Probably. Fact. Yeah. That's a fact. So yes. now, okay, fine, whatever. All right? Maybe they've forgiven you. <laughs> right? Maybe they yes. forgave you. Yeah. Okay. Wrestling. All right. So if you want to work with them and you keep trying to have a meeting, because that's been reported, right? He's He's been trying to, uh, to speak to him for a while. It hasn't happened. What does that tell you? tells me, Brian, that the guy in charge of this whole thing may want to reconsider, may want to put his foot down and take a different course of action because... Well, hold on. We'll get to you. We'll get to that in a second. There are a lot of people then when this spirals out that, you know... Go ahead. Uh, well, we'll get to that in a second, but like my question. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, if someone punched you, Mike... Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I can't, yes. I can't say you. We'll just say, uh, you know, somebody else. If if uh, if your son Avery, okay, if a kid at school punched Avery, okay, mm -hmm. and then the kid wants to like go play with Avery, but like every time he calls Avery, doesn't want to talk to him. What does that tell you? Avery's still pretty pissed. That's doesn't what it tells me. Kid. Yeah. That's what it tells me. Yes. Okay. Because there are true emotions and feelings in real life feelings that that happen at any workplace even in wrestling yes it's not all about money we make money more than friends it's all about putting the dollar over this or that not everybody is wired that way so my point is like that's nice that he wants to work with them no. but it appears that they don't want to work with him <laughs> right so now is this going to be like you know broken down and and uh, you know oh uh, yeah Brian's fault? No, I'm just that that's it, right? Well, see, you've been you've that's been, it. You've been saved by this because they don't have to work with him. Chris Jericho is going to jump in and, and work with him since he he was never going to work with him and now he's well. Going to hold work on a second. Him, so. Hold on. Let's not. We don't know what this Punk Jericho meeting is about. Okay, it could be that Jericho wants to work with CM Punk. But if you recall that Instagram post that CM Punk posted, he said that, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it was like, Dave Meltzer's a liar, Chris Jericho. What did he say about Chris Jericho? Stooge. I think he called him a stooge or something like that. Yes. So, I mean, I don't know what the meeting is about. I have no idea. But it seems to me that the likelihood would be that he would like to talk to CM Punk about why he did an Instagram post and called him a stooge. Right? <laughs> I, well, yeah, but I think Jericho would know the answer because Punk's going to look at him and go, because I think you're a stooge. Now, whether they can work those things out between themselves, we don't know. Those are two huge personalities. They are very self-aware of who they are. I just, I, I don't look, this whole thing to me, again, if you're just a fan and there are people, and I know they're mostly not listening to this show, but the average fan doesn't care about any of this stuff they want everybody else on. But there is a real life. Every time you pull back something, it's pulling back something else, whether it be Hangman or, again, everybody and their friends and how they feel about things. I don't know. I don't I can't see this working. I don't know why CM Punk would want to go back there unless he really needs the money, because I would take a release and do whatever I wanted. If I wanted to go work somewhere, I would go work somewhere. It wouldn't be about the money. It would be because I wanted to wrestle. So he doesn't have to be there to wrestle. You know, if it's about a paycheck, that's a different story. If it's about the wrestling, he can go anywhere. When it comes to, again, a lot of the young bucks, right? I wouldn't want to work with him either, considering what had happened if you're Kenny Omega or if you're the young bucks. So if you're anybody else that's there, 
I feel for them, the ones that are in the middle who are just throwing their hands up, who don't want to deal with any of this nonsense, and who, frankly, many of them, or at least some of them, I can tell you for sure, were pretty much exasperated after the last round of everything. So to come back with this, uh, I, I don't see how this is going to work. I don't see how this is not going to be just a constant tabloid ask he said she said it's like high school there anyway and i'm not trying to be insulting but it feels like high school there a lot of the time and now we're just going to have more of that with grown adults put on display for everybody and what should matter which is what's taking place in the ring and trying to build up a lot of the stuff with that company from a wrestling point of view from the on-screen point of view you know, again, we, we saw what happened the last time and where things went creatively after that and the cluster that happened. And granted, there were injuries and other things. But, like, that's really, at the end of the day, as a fan, all I kind of care about. And, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case because we're going to be talking about this probably until until the next time. Dynamite, 866,000 viewers, 18 to 49, sixth on cable, 0.28, down 6.7% from last week. Tyson Lewis rating for the show since March 15th. NBA play and tournament games took the top two spots, point, uh, 1.13, 18 to 49, and a 0.79. And uh, all access to 281,000 viewers, uh, 51st on cable. With a 0 0.08 rating, uh, the lowest numbers at All Access has done. I watched this show. It was uh, it was just kind of a show this week. I mean, there was nothing, uh, you know, it's a lot on uh, the. It was it was mostly full gear and the Young Bucks coming back for their first match since uh, the mystery, which they do not mention in any way. They don't even say suspension. They're just back, and they were concerned that they would not be good or would get booed. And uh, neither happened. And then the Britt baker Soraya match, which uh, uh, that was pretty much the focus of that episode. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Mickey James relinquished the Impact title due to several injuries that have kept her out of action for more than a month. In a show-closing promo in an empty arena Thursday, she delivered a promo where she said she had to do what's right for the business, the locker room, and for the title. She thanked the viewers for the last rodeo that brought her to the title, said she is not cleared to compete at Rebellion. She said, Deanna Jordan, it's your time now. She put the title and her cowboy hat in the ring and left. I didn't like that. Well, the impression I've been giving is that she is not retiring, even Good. though yeah. a lot of people that watched it kind of got that impression. They wore boots. That's the thing that, like, I held out a little bit of hope for. But laying down that hat and walking away like that, no, we still need Mickey James in pro wrestling. All right, back in a moment. Aaron Stevens joining us. We've got a lot to talk about there. Hopefully nothing to do with anything else we talk about on this show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy today to be joined by Aaron Stevens. Talk some pro wrestling here, some NWA, Crockett Cup, some acting, and more. And uh, Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Brian? Thank you for having me. I'm, uh, like I said, a big fan of everything you do, so uh, really appreciate you having me on. Well, I really appreciate it. So what's been going on lately? Bring us up to speed. Well, no, there's just been uh, kind of a, uh, a resurgence in my pro wrestling career over the last... Uh, actually, a year and a half, two years, um, which is weird. I never saw myself in pro wrestling, and... Uh, it's funny because, you know, when I had left wrestling, I said, I'm going to try the acting world. And I, I had, you know, some some success. You know, I, I got to do some network shows and some cable shows and some movies and everything. But then um, recently got on the show Heels, uh, which is a show about pro wrestling. So that was a great kind of um, mashing of the two worlds. And, uh, of course, everything going on with NWA now, it's, uh, it's just crazy because it's a uh, – I don't know. It's just like a really interesting time in my life. And uh, it's a fun time in my life because for the first time, like I'm enjoying pro wrestling again. And I have NWA to thank for that. Looks like you're going to be going on a little bit of a tour here to Australia with the whole world as a vampire deal that's going on. And that also took you to Mexico. Was that the first time that you had actually wrestled in Mexico when it came to the AAA NWA world as a vampire show? 
No, I had been in Mexico several times with uh, with WWE before. So this was my first time like outside of WWE. And we were in Mexico City. That was uh, last month. And man, what a great time we had. It was just just an amazing time. I mean, the uh, the only thing I have to say is don't ever squirt a lime on a taco down there um, because you will pay the price. But uh, but other than that, the crowd was just amazing. Um, you know, food was amazing. Uh, and just uh, the fans were incredible absolutely incredible and it's funny because with wwe when we go internationally you know we we have some opportunities to kind of interact with fans and everything but uh this we had more opportunity and like it was uh just a little more leeway where we got to actually kind of have conversations with them it wasn't like you know they were in a line and just you know autograph picture and push them through so i enjoyed that and uh and one of my favorite things to do was actually talking to the fans and to see what they like about pro wrestling, like what attracts them to the sport. Why do they watch? Why do they not only invest their money, but the commodity that in my opinion is more important than money and more valuable is their time. And uh, so that that's always uh, a good deal. And uh, the Australia tour is going on right now. And uh, I am not on that Australia tour because I do not like long plane rides. (laughs) <laughs> now, that, I, I got to look, there's so much wrestling to talk about, but you mentioned something right there that could save a life for a traveler who does go down to Mexico. Oh. Why do you not squeeze the lime on the taco? Is it like the lime on the beer where it's meant to keep the bugs away and not actually meant to go into the food? You know, um, that I'm not sure of, but uh, I just know that I don't think uh, my stomach necessarily agrees with um, the vegetation and the um, the produce down there. I so, yeah, I understand. <laughs> but the tacos were, I mean, off the chain. Oh my god, they had a a station where there was just this big. Thing. I think it was pork or something. And they were shaving it off and making the tacos right there. It was just incredible. Um, and uh, I mean, everyone they they took care of us from the time we landed till the time we left. And uh, I just love love Mexico. Now, you had mentioned something uh, earlier where, you know, you talked about being back in pro wrestling and said something like, uh, uh, would you say kind of surprising because you never uh, pictured yourself? Yeah. What what did you say? Yeah, I when when I was done, um, especially, you know, um, with WWE the last year or so there, I had just become. And I'll say, yeah, I'll I'll say sour to the business. Yeah. because, you know, again, I've been in wrestling since I was 16. It's the only job I ever had. And it just, you know, it can become a grind like anything else. Um, but when you kind of, you take away everything that makes it awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, one of the things, right? Like, I'm not going to be one of these people that say, oh, they, they should have given me this and they didn't. Or this should have happened and it didn't. And ultimately, it's, uh, it's Vince McMahon's sandbox. We're all just playing in it. Um, but I just thought, you know, based upon, you know, the, the years I was there, like the fan response, merchandise sales, um, and how I was able to, you know, produce work with anybody, um, you know, being put in segments that I didn't necessarily want to be in, but having to make the most of them and just try to be a model employee, you know, not failing drug tests, always talking well about the company, which I still do, by the way, because, I'm not going to bury WWE because they gave me a large portion of everything I have today. And, and have it not been for WWE, I don't think I would have had the opportunities I would have had in kind of the world of film and television. So, um, you know, it was just at the time w- with the lack of creativity that I was getting, um, I just said, you know what, I, I think I'm done. And I had mentally kind of just resigned um, any aspect of doing anything in pro wrestling again. And I was actually in Hawaii filming an episode of Magnum PI thinking like, Oh, well, this is great. I'm getting my acting career going. And uh, Billy Corgan called me and said, Hey, we're doing some uh, NWA TV tapings in Georgia. And I was like, congratulations. And, um, but it was, uh, no, just you come. Yeah. All right. Whatever. And then when I walked in the Georgia studio the first time and I saw it, I was like, Oh, okay. All right. Like, let's see where this goes. Cause it was just that traditional, like old school, you know, like the uh, the Georgia Championship wrestling with the uh, the interview desk and the way the ring looked, and uh, it was just a really really cool thing. And and it was kind of like everything I had loved about wrestling, or you know, wrestling. And uh, I, I think we know what I'm talking about. Like I, uh, it, it's the, the the very traditional North American pro wrestling, right? Like television wrestling. Um, 
so I, I said, hey, let's let's see what we uh, let's see what we got, and just kind of one thing led to another, and um, I'm just. I'm really, really glad, and uh, I'm really, really blessed to be um, to be a part of the NWA because it has been, you know, healing, cathartic in so many different ways for me on so many different levels, and um, and it's just, uh, you know, it's a company that's growing, and as we're finding out like who we are, um, you know, we're putting out a product that, you know, whoever and, and everyone has an opinion, right? So. It's it's an alternative. It's different, and and we get, you know, the, the vast majority of us, anyways, get where the company should be, and that starts from the top down, and you know, from Billy's vision, and then Pat Caney, who is his uh, head of talent relations, who has been phenomenal in terms of you know parlaying, um, you know, the directions and the creative and the um, just all all like the the day to day stuff from Billy to the talent. Um, it, it's just the right people seem to be in place and that, um, that really is everything. It, it's who you're surrounded with, who you're working with. And, um, really I can say like a lot of my closest friends are in the NWA. You know, a lot of, a lot of wrestlers, especially, you know, back in the day, you know, they would be, they would leave a company and then, you know, they didn't want to hear that people said that they were bitter. Like it was mm-hmm. like a, like a, like a, like a four letter word bitter. Oh, he's mm-hmm. bitter. But I was, I was kind of was like, it's okay to be bitter. Like if you, if you really feel that you, uh, you know, performed at a level and they didn't see it and it didn't work out for you and you ended up not there anymore. I mean, it's okay to be bitter about that. But what I think is, is cool about wrestling nowadays is, you know, it, 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 there was a period where if you were at a WWF or WCW, I mean, it's like there was nothing. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you could try and go overseas or whatever, but mm-hmm. it was like it was 2000, early 2000s, you know, the indie scene. And But nowadays it's like there's so many different companies. There's so many different styles of wrestling. There's mm-hmm. so many places you can go where, yeah, you'd make the most money in WWE, but if that's not in the cards right now, I mean, there are other places where you can work and you can make money and you can be under contract and you can work the kind of wrestling that you want to work. I mean, there's there's opportunities out there that there weren't before. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. What a great time to be in wrestling. Go ahead, Mike. When it comes to, you know, 2019, when everything kind of kicked off, you know, the NWA Power Show was, it really was a must-see show because you were seeing guys like you who people wanted to see who had left WWE or left other promotions and people wanted to see them and they got a chance to. They were able to develop people like Ricky Starks, give Eddie Kingston a, a megaphone. Eli Drake, obviously, is another one, L.A. Knight. Things because changes happen, time moves on. There have been some, you know, uh, peaks and valleys for the NWA since then. And mm-hmm. a lot of the attention, Billy Corgan talked about it only last week. A lot of the attention sometimes is focused too much upon him personally or Tyrus personally. Can you kind of cut through some of that and talk to the wrestling fan as to why, with all of these other options out there, the NWA is something to get back on and is a place that you need to have your interest? Yeah, I mean, I I think, okay, so traditionally, um, since kind of the inception of television, um, pro wrestling has been there. You know, the, uh, the, the first two programs on TV, they, you had the news and you had wrestling. Um, you know, wrestling was easy to produce. You just stick a camera in the arena. You have your drama. You have your action. It was kind of like all this stuff wrapped into one. Um, and traditionally, that model has sustained the wrestling business throughout television. Um and, you know, nowadays, and because to me, right, like, one of the things I cannot stand is people that used to do this saying, oh, well, nobody does this nowadays. Nobody sells. Back in my day, we were better. No, no, no. Um, first and foremost, as society evolves, so should any form of entertainment if that form of entertainment wishes to still exist. So we have, again, uh, there's a difference in styles, right? Like, a lot of the wrestlers are smaller nowadays. Um, a lot of the the action, it's it's high flying and athletically. I mean, I don't think there there has no. I don't think I know. There has never been a time in wrestling where the level of athleticism 
and you know acrobatics has been higher than it is now. Um, absolutely incredible. The thing is, in my opinion, there's not a lot of focus on personalities and character, like even with WWE. The WWE name sells, and you really don't have those super strong, defined personalities that people are necessarily paying money to see. You paid to see Hulk Hogan. You paid to see Steve Austin. You paid to see The Rock. You paid to see Goldberg. You paid to see Ric Flair. Um, nowadays, it's more just like, I think, go out there and create content. And, and I think in AEW, you know, there's obviously that super athletic style, and it's great. But then at what point are we going to invest in the character? Because I always judge matches. When someone comes through the curtain, okay, what kind of a response do they get? But at the end of the match, Whatever the finish is, are they cheering for the move? Are they cheering for the person? Or are they cheering for the outcome, the emotional outcome that that match was designed to have? And I think a perfect example of that, it was a couple months ago, was when Jeff Jarrett, and I, I, I don't watch regularly, but I, I, I happen to catch, it was a tag match involving Jeff. Um, and if you watch the crowd throughout that whole match, right, you, you didn't necessarily see all of the, the moonsaults and flips. I mean, there was, to a degree, you know, they, they, there was action, but it wasn't like in some of the other matches. But if you look at the crowd, they were on the edge of their seat, they were cheering, they were screaming, because Jeff had sucked them in, got their attention, and was taking them on that emotional roller coaster ride that I believe pro wrestling should be. And that is essentially the style that, in the NWA, that's the kind of product we would like to put out. Now, um, with Billy, yes, the man's one of the biggest rock stars ever, so that's going to garner attention. And I believe that's a good thing because if we can get people's attention, it's up to us, the talent, to keep their attention, right? Like, I – look, I didn't want to be uh, – Well, actually, hold, hold that thought one second because we had to head to a break. But we'll be back to pick it up after the break. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, Aaron Stevens joining us here. Sometimes we do these shows and it's like – Ah, we had just enough time for that interview. And then you have a day like today where I think we just started and we're out of time. So uh, yes. we're going to get Aaron back here. Uh, the Crockett Cup is June 3rd and 4th in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And uh, we got a ways to go until then. So uh, before the Crockett Cup actually takes place, we'll get you on again and uh, maybe even do an entire Friday show. I would have preferred if you'd have been all day today as opposed to what I talked about in the first two segments. So uh, we'll do a full show uh, next time because there's a lot of stuff from Ohio Valley, which we talked about during the break, to uh, yeah, WWE and NWA. But anyway, let's get some plugs in for your stuff. And uh, next time we'll talk about heels as well, but we're still waiting for the info on the second season. So mm -hmm. the floor is yours. No, uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Aaron Files, T H E A R O N Files. My parents uh, called me Aaron, so it's A R O N. Uh, Twitter, it's Aaron Thoughts, A R O N S Thoughts. And uh, yeah, just be sure to follow NWA, see what's going on there. Uh, Crockett Cup, one of the most, or the most prestigious tag team tournament and the longest standing tag team tournament in wrestling. And uh, this is not going to disappoint uh, some of the stuff we got coming up. It's going to be really, really cool. So just keep watching NWA. We're on power. Uh, on YouTube, that's Tuesdays at 6.05. We're live, but then it's on there the whole time. So give NWA a follow on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, I really, really want to come back. This was great. 26 years in wrestling, Aaron Stevens. 26 years. Do I look it? Actually, no. No. <laughs> 40 years old. That's pretty impressive. Well, and and uh, Skin regimen. We can talk about skin care next time I'm on. You know... At my age, that'd be a good thing to talk about. But, hey, we got to wrap it up, everybody. Aaron, I want to thank you so much for doing the show today. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll be back later on this weekend for subscribers, WrestlingObserver.com. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.